Hey everybody, Raul here for Bass Musician Magazine, and today we have the extraordinary honor and pleasure of catching up with our friend Dave Maros. Yay! <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so, Dave, it's been a minute since we talked last in the wild swirl of the last few years. We chatted back December 2019, and a whole lot of stuff has been happening between pandemic and world events and all kinds of things. So get us caught up. What's been going on since we chatted last? Well, we've done... Uh... A couple more, one or two more pattern seeking animals, maybe one more since then. Wow. I can't remember the date of the the second one. Yeah, that's been kind of cruising right along, of, you know, about one a year for that. Fox Beard is, we had, in fact, we should have just come back from UK, but Omicron kind of scared us, so we canceled that. And the cover band I was in pretty much came to a standstill, and it's kind of, Coming back a little bit at a time, but to be honest, I'm just as happy not doing the weddings and the corporate events <laughs> and getting older and, you know, staying vertical. That's the, taking care of the chickens. And there you go. So say we all. <laughs> so that said, on the exciting news, there's a new album only passing through coming up on the horizon. Tell us about this project. You know, John is constantly writing and he comes up with an album or so of material and then the process starts. He has pretty complete demos recorded and he'll start sending work tracks to us. And we mainly, you know, Jimmy records in the Mouse House, you know, which is the, the studio in LA area that is famous for everything that I've done in the last 15, 20 years. But after that, you know, the Jimmy's tracks get sent to everybody along with John's work tracks and, and we start recording a lot of this stuff at our own studios. And if it gets pieced together that way, then it goes back to the mouse house to get mixed and mastered. And this year was kind of funny because of not only what the pandemic has done to every business, but also just the resurgence of vinyl. There's only so much limited vinyl production available. So you have to put in your order for vinyl a full year in advance. Oh, wow. And so between Omicron and the, it's the whole thing and the vinyl and all these other weird factors, the uh, release of this album has been delayed. It was supposed to be out actually late last year, I think. But, you know, we wanted everything to actually be ready when we said it was going to be ready. So, you know, it's April 1st, which is uh, in a few days, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's we're just dealing with it that way. We have a couple gigs coming up. We're doing Rosfest on the uh, April 17th, 18th can't remember. And then we've got Cruise to the Edge in May. Cool. And so those are big things. I've been working like a fiend trying to learn these songs. <laughs> I gotta be honest, this is my most difficult set to learn ever in my life. And it doesn't, when you listen to it, it doesn't sound like that. And physically, it's not the hardest thing to play physically, mm -hmm. but the memorization involves, maybe it's just because I'm getting, you know, <laughs> not so young anymore but these things I just keep going over them and over them and over them it's like when is this going to like permanently implant and I'm finally getting there you know finally like yesterday I went through the set and didn't make too many drastic errors and we have rehearsals next week so I have to be ready in a few days there you go yeah and so yeah there's all that going on well from what I sampled I got a chance to listen to rock paper scissors and I would say on many fronts, the precision, the musicality, everything that we've come to expect from Pattern Seeking Animals is there and then some. I mean, it is spot on. It is this razor sharp piece. Thank you. The, the topic on this, and especially again, the video work, it is very timely because it has kind of a, a war theme. And so I, I know as we were talking before recording, this wasn't planned to fit around the current world events, but it does have kind of a World War II era kind of retro yeah. feel. And, you know, it's just like, oh my gosh, this 
is so like, did they do this for right now? Or did they, could they have known, you know? Yeah, it did, you know, it does, it hit just perfect timing. I mean, it was, it was weird. You know, and, and I think John generally likes to write about kind of dystopian, you know, scenarios and, mm-hmm. and things, you know, you can kind of feel when things are starting to become uneasy in the world. And I'm sure that affected his, his writing. Also, let me mention, I can't stay here anymore, which again, you've got bass opening the, the tune, you know, so you, you're laying down the foundation for the rest of it. And it does have kind of a, again, in the topic, yeah. black and white, yeah, dystopian, despondent. Uh, you kind of going. It, it it is coming up to the surface. I think in these challenging times, musicians so often are the spokespeople for the general population, the people that can say what everybody else is feeling. But you know, you put it into words and create this thing, and then we go, oh wow, yeah, I I can relate yeah. because of that. But again, just loving the the precision and the the notes and the musicality and all of the 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 components and so it's like as they say in the theater always leave them wanting more so i'm wanting more and very much looking forward to that so that's that's very exciting did you do any changes with your setup any differences in gear since pattern seeking animals started i've been using kind of the same setup for recording which is I have, you know, a number of bases that I kind of rotate through, but for patent seeking animals, I've been using a Yamaha BB, I'm trying to remember the model number, 735. It's a five string Yamaha a PJ kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And it's got a very strong B string. John writes a lot in D and C and, and stuff, and you really kind of need that fifth. And I've been on a P bass kick lately anyway, you know, I go I have these like a, I call it a crush you get a crush on a certain type of bass and yeah. you know I got into P basses a couple years ago and so that's working I also have one of my kind of Rickenbacker sounding things that I've cobbled together and that made a few appearances and you know I just record DI and then apply a plug-in to that I use the Ampeg SVX suite which is uh, IK multimedia mm-hmm. and That thing, it's still the best Ampeg. You know, everyone else is coming out with their killer Ampeg models, and they're all great. I still keep going back to the IK Multimedia one. I should be a rep for that company. (laughs) I started with that when it first came out, and and I was a very big skeptic on bass amp models. Guitar amp models seem to work better for some reason, and bass never worked, never worked. Maybe because I'm pickier, because I'm a bass player. And then uh, Ampeg SVX came out, and I was like, well, let's see what this thing sounds like. And I was an SVT guy in the late 70s, early 80s, and booted this thing up, and it was like, oh my God, this is it. <laughs> I felt it, you know. I visualized my old amp when, when I plugged into that thing. So I've been using that since, I don't know, 2006 or something. Nice. So yeah, it's, for recording, it's been kind of the same used a couple of different effects, you know, for weird things, like there's a, a times tremolo in this song that hasn't come out as a single. It's a really weird effect. John had done it with a sequenced bass, and so it doesn't sound right if I just play it like this. Mm-hmm. So let me try this weird effect, and it was it's killer, you know. Yeah. Live, I'm using, I, I usually, I used to have this big old tube preamp pedal board thing for years and years and years. Now I finally made the switch to a Helix. Okay. I got it for the for gigs, you know, I wanted something I can just throw in my suitcase and I got a little Helix stomp and uh, have that programmed. And that's gonna work out really well. And so yeah, that's it. My gear is remain it's different but the same, you know. Gotcha. So actually I am a total Yamaha boy now. I'm using a Yamaha bass and you Yamaha owns line six. Yeah, yeah. You are, you are good to go with that. Well, yeah. and you know, it has been an evolution, I think, especially with the modeling, amp modeling, because, you know, if you have the benefit of the sound without having, I don't know, what one of those weighs about 50, 60 pounds yeah. <laughs> to lug around. So you're getting away. Well, this is, 
this is great. It, it had the sound I was looking for without the hassle or taking yeah. up all the space. And so you, you can't go wrong with that. I like to record with plugins too because you can change your mind. Totally. You know, I mean, sometimes I'll go through a bunch of different amp models and sometimes I'll go to like, you know, a different company's plugins and try a Marshall or something. And you can just keep, I waste so much time with that too. I mean, <laughs> that's the one plus and also the drawback from recording by myself here at home mm -hmm. is I can spend as much time as I want to get things exactly how I want. And that's also the giant drawback is because I do spend as much time as I think is necessary changing things 1%, I'll spend an hour, you know. Inching, inching it along, yeah. Or decide that the first thing I tried was the best. And yeah. so, okay, that whole thing I did on Wednesday, I'll just not do that and go back to Tuesday. <laughs> Whereas in the studio, you know, back in the other days, you know, people would be like, oh, Dave, that's great. We've got to move on. Totally. Well, and that has been one of the significant changes, I say, especially because of the pandemic. So many musicians have been recording from home remotely. Yeah. And I'd had the conversation with somebody where he'd mentioned that, you know, back in the day, if you were late, you'd lay down some tracks on tape in a studio and then those would get mailed to another studio across the country where they would lay down their part and then that would bounce to another studio where the other guy was. And, you know, this whole process between shipping, handling, going from place to place, it would take months and that could be for a single song, yeah. you know, by the time you were said and done. But, you know, now yeah. bass players have had to learn this skill set of the how to interact with all of the tech stuff so you're turning into your own engineer yeah kind of while you're at it because you're not just sending a, a plain signal and let them do whatever you are tweaking and modifying it and the last yeah. nam show was a 2020 show we'd been by and talked to the nice people at roland and all the with all the synth stuff and it just goes over my head I'm, I'm, i i think like a spaceship i'm looking all the knobs wires <laughs> things and I'm going thank goodness I my instrument has wood and strings I'm a very simple it's like Pinocchio it's, a, <laughs> it's an easy kind of thing compared to this spaceship and I told the the young fellow who was trying to explain it to me I said you know I don't even know all this stuff my car does and, and, and it has less controls than this no. you know this is just a little overwhelming but it is the times you have to work at figuring out and making all these things work. Yeah. Well, for me, you know, it's the lack of knobs and wires. <laughs> it's like you get this thing, this box with three knobs on it or or a computer interface or something, and it's like, okay, well, I know it does all this stuff. How am I going to do it? You yeah. Know? If there's knobs, you just look at, you just play with the knobs and, t and you hear what happens. Mm -hmm. It's kind of weird sometimes. And, and now, you know, fortunately, though, they'll have graphic user interfaces even for like my little stomp it has an edit program so I can where everything's laid out and it's much faster to program if I had to go back to hold on a second let me change something you know pushing the little buttons going through windows and you know yeah but like back in god I remember the Yamaha in the 80s the DX7 I was like foolish enough to think that I could start. That's a really hard thing to program. Mm. It's got all those FM operators and Ugh. and you got it like and you had a little tiny LED screen and you're just poking buttons like constantly <laughs> trying to. Get... <laughs> it's like I just don't have the will to do that anymore. I hear you, man. Well, we're really looking forward as as we look ahead. Only passing through, coming out just around the corner in April upcoming events and tours you'd mentioned again the cruise and and the nearby tour if people want to stay on top of what's going on psa animals onecom still the best place yes we have that and we also have you know a facebook page and i'm pretty sure that there's instagram and, and that kind of thing too but you know i i limit my social media to one thing <laughs> i waste enough time there so yes the key thing is remember it with it Pattern Seeking Animals, PSA and yeah. PS Animals, but the number one after it. 
yeah. is the useful way to make sure we find that. Yeah. Excellent. Well, Dave, we appreciate you taking time out of your schedule. Very exciting news with the new album. I can't wait to hear more. Folks, you've seen him here on Bass Musician Magazine, Dave Maros. Thank you very much.